Hi everyone, this is Mark. I am starting a new channel because today I picked up this new antique piano. Um, it's a late 1890s Ivers and Pond piano and uh, it was owned by a local guy here. He had it for about 20 years, received it as payment for a music performance. He had plans of refinishing it but never really got around to it. I've been really looking for about a year, uh, maybe a little longer than that, uh, looking at old pianos that are kind of that 1890s to you know, pre-Great Depression time period to fix up. Uh, and this one kind of hit the right spot with the right time period, the looks, um, kind of right stage of life to be able to work on it. So uh, we just picked it up today, we brought it home, and this is really the first, uh, first time we've had a chance to really kind of get my hands dirty on a project like this. Um, a little bit about me, I'm not a piano player, I'm not a piano technician, but I'm pretty handy, I'm a tinkerer, I like to mess around with things. And so this was a project that I thought would be fun for me to work on. We already have an older piano, a uh, late 60s spinet piano that my, uh, my kids play and they get their piano lessons on. Uh, so we have a family piano already, but we're really looking to make this one kind of a long-term heirloom if we can get it refurbished and looking nice. So I created this channel. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> I created this channel. Uh, to just kind of document the process as I go through and, and rework this piano. Um, and I'll kind, of, I'll kind of go in here and show you just what it looks like from a first impression standpoint. Uh, but besides that, I'm excited to get to work on it. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to take a long time. I, I don't imagine this is going to be quick. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes and things along the way, and I'll just have to figure out how to fix them and, and get going. But, Long-term goal for this is to have a nice, beautiful sounding piano that, you know, that's tuned up right and it's mechanically working right. Uh, so this can be a nice family piano and also looking to refinish it uh, so it can really be a good centerpiece in our living room. So uh, that's kind of where it's at and this channel is just going to be a, a log of what I do and as I go and we'll see how it goes from there but uh, really looking forward to getting into this. I'm going to try my hand here, a little bit of hand holding while I show what's going on in here. Uh, we'll start with the top of the piano. Uh, this piano is all the old original finish. Um, at some point in time somebody actually went through and painted this and so the previous person that had it, uh, he told me he went through and he stripped off all the paint to get back down to the uh, original wood. Um, there's still there's a little bit of uh, cosmetic stuff that needs to be addressed. This, these panels here in the front, uh, these are missing. Uh, this center panel is original. Uh, actually, as I looked into it a little bit, though, this is actually the back side. It's been flipped around. Um, and then there's just kind of lots of wear and tear around the thing, but it's really a beautiful, beautiful design. Uh, there's a little bit of water damage on top. It's probably not going to come off well in the video, but uh, you can see there's some splits in the veneer here, and there's a couple on the other side as well. Um, so, yeah, looking at it on the inside, we open her up. Um, I think this piano actually had a black finish to it uh, because the underside of this lid is black and a lot of the other uh, things within the piano are black as we go. So it's, uh, it's kind of what leads me to think that. But looking inside, it's all original. Um, and I'll, I'll take the front off too. You're looking at these pins, the tuning pins, they're all real dusty. Uh, you can see here it's Ivers and Pond Piano Company. The serial number is 8,190. Um, I need to try to date it exactly, but I think that puts it in the late 1890s. Uh, so this is a pretty old antique piano. Uh, so yeah, let's take the front off here and we'll take a little bit deeper look. So I've taken the, the uh, covers off the piano and the keyboard, uh, really so you can get a good look on the inside. Uh, as you can see, I've not had a chance to clean this at all. We literally just got this in the garage here about a couple hours ago. Uh, right before dinner, so I've kind of looked through it a little bit, but really haven't had a chance to do anything. Uh, so looking through the piano, these are all the original strings. All, all the original strings. You can really see these strings. It probably doesn't come across in the video very well, but they are all pretty rusty and crusty. Uh, they get a lot of dust buildup, which you'd expect for something this old. Um, 
looking at the treble springs, just looking through these, these are all really rusty. Um, I thought perhaps they wouldn't be too bad a shape, but this was stored in a garage for a while, and so everything is just built up a coat of rust. I think the best thing that we're going to be able to do here is restring it. Uh, in general, for the action, it's pretty much all there in decent shape. Uh, we do have uh, uh, we do have some issues here with the jack or the hammer butt. Um, we have a missing hammer here. We've got some broken strings down on the far end. Uh, so we've got some work there to do, but most of the pieces are here. Uh, looking down at the keys, we've got a couple little helpers here. Uh, I don't know how well it shows up, but some of these keys are in pretty rough shape. Uh, you can see down here, if I zoom in a little bit, uh, these key butts, they're, uh, they're just broken. Not all of them, but a good number of them are chipped or cracked or broken in half. So it's going to take more than just rebushing it, it's going to be a full on uh, kind of a refurbishment on these to get these back in working shape. The keys themselves are original ivories. But these ivories are again in, in really, really poor shape. There's maybe less than a quarter of them that are actually uh, usable still. Sharps don't look too bad. I just may need to clean those up. Again, this is just a first look though. Uh, if we go down underneath to the trap work, I got some light down here. Uh, looking at the base bridge, it's not too bad. There's a few just small hairline cracks, um, but it's not. It doesn't look like it's a total, uh, you know, total issue here. It looks like it's in pretty good shape still. Uh, maybe just need to look and see what I can do to epoxy or glue or repair those cracks. Um, but other than being dusty and dirty, uh, the pedals all need they all need work. Nothing's nothing's really loose or tight or tight um, connected anymore obviously this is all just this full of dust and dirt and gross um, there's a little bit of a structural issue on the side I don't think I'm going to be able to see it here Maybe I can do this. Hmm, too bright there we go. so there's a crack in that corner brace if you see it looks like it's been tried someone's tried to screw and fix it and it's split uh, and so this side where the leg is actually is uh, uh, sagging a little bit. Oops, that. Uh, so I've got it kind of wedged up right now and blocked up, but it's going to going to continue to be a problem. Oh, a little bit better looking there. So yeah, it's, this is going to be a mess. First step, really just going to get in here and clean everything out. I did, did look at the soundboard from behind. It really doesn't look in too bad a shape. Um, and I don't hear any buzzing and stuff when I play. I'll give a few of these notes a try. Some really out of tune ones. You can just see how bad a shape these keys are. A couple of these notes actually sound decent. But got a decent tone and ring to it. Study pet, study ones. So yeah, it's it's pretty rough.
Okay, just to try to give a preview of how this sounds, I got my daughter's uh, finger power lesson book, and I'm going to just kind of run through one of these just to see what happens. Let's see here. That's, uh, that's what it is here. Like I said, I'm not a piano player. I know just enough to play along with my daughter's 30 year, 30 year exercises, but it gives an idea of how it sounds. Here's another thing we can do, just out of curiosity. Let's go from the bottom of the frame here to I get the lid open, but let's split the difference there. So it's uh, 55 and a half inches, so I don't know exactly how you'd standardize that. If you call that a 56 when you factor in the gap from the ground, found some blocks here, but it's a uh, from the ground, it's 57, 58 ish inches roughly. So, it's a pretty good sized piano. Um, and you can see it's got full size strings. It's not, uh, I mean, you've got the riser keys and everything in here. So, there you go. I'm just going to go through here with a damp cloth. Just start kind of wiping down some of these surfaces just to see once we get through the dust kind of what we're working with. This is nice, a uh, black rail here. pretty nice looking. Obviously it's all just caked with dust and dirt, but really it's, I would say looking at it right now, the keys are in a lot worse shape than I thought, not necessarily the key tops, I expected those to be bad, um, but really just the condition of the keys with the, the key buttons. I expected that to do some re, uh, I guess redoing the key bushings and balance rail bushings. But uh, first thing first might actually be going through and repairing the keys themselves. Look at this though, once you get some of the dust off of here, this is really, this is looking nice. My goal for this piano is not to necessarily make it look showroom new, because it's an old piano and it's going to always be an old piano. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of what we want to do is just uh, clean it up. Uh, make it look good, but still keep it kind of as a, you know, as much original as we can. So it's going to end up probably new, or definitely new strings, new tuning pins, uh, new hammers. Uh, hammers really aren't in too bad a shape, but when you get to the end of them here, there's some of these, you know, high trouble hammers are just cracked and falling apart. Um, and the fact that they're, you know, original hammers from uh, the 1890s, there's really, uh, 
And I think it would just do a lot better for the piano itself to uh, to make them uh, just replace them with new hammers. A lot of these action parts are, I'll go through and I'll check, but my plan there is to go through and do um, really all the repinning and replacing all the felts, uh, bushing most likely with their age, uh, going through all the bridle straps, leathers, everything. Uh, but probably we'll keep as much of the original wood components as I can. Uh, so that's that's really uh, kind of just going through every little bit, uh, piece by piece, and and bringing it back up to modern working condition is my goal. Uh, the end, if you really want this to be a nice playing piano, uh, like I said, I, I don't play piano. Uh, I, I've tinkered around a little bit, and my daughters are both playing piano. My, my oldest is starting her third year of piano lessons right now, my youngest is starting her first. Uh, and I've been playing along with my oldest lesson book and stuff like that. And so I've been, I've been keeping up. Um, I'm a trumpet player. Uh, I, I still play in a, cap, or in a big band, uh, and so I, I enjoy doing that. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm musical. My wife uh, has played clarinet in high school, and she sings in the choir. Um, she's very, you know, we're a very musical family. It's important to us, and so we wanted to get a big upright piano, and, and we really fell in love with these old ones. So it's, it's you know, really a matter of interest for us to be able to restore this. I'm sure. And there's a lot of people out there that will say it's probably too big of a job to take on, but really I think if you break it down a little chunks, the little chunks are within what I expect I'll be able to handle. It's just going to take a long time and a lot of effort. And it's going to take some money, right? It's not uh, doing this isn't free. Got the piano for free, but by the time we're all said and done, I'm sure it's not going to be anywhere you know, near that mark. We're not, we're not trying to fool ourselves there, but we want to get it playing nice, sounding nice, and looking nice. So it really can be, uh, it can have a new life as our family piano going forward. So that's, that's the goal here. So yeah, I'll just keep working on it. This is really the first view. I'm um, having a chance to look at it and we'll, we'll keep plugging away at it. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.